Good afternoon, Valley City State University, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends of the university. Welcome to our last artist talk for the fall 2021 uh, academic school year right now. Uh, my name is Professor Angela Mirso, director of the director of the VCSU Gallery and department chair of the art department. We are here today to hear Kayla Trebol go over her great, awesome exhibition, Fruit Delights, today. As you are tuning in today, please feel free as you're watching, either on YouTube or on Facebook, to type in your questions during the talk. At the end of Kayla's talk, we will go through a Q&A session and take all questions and answers. So without further ado, Kayla, who is a double major in elementary education and in art, and also a digital design minor here at VCSU. She will now give her presentation over her exhibition, Fruit Delight. Kayla. Thanks, Angela. My show is Fruit Delight, but before I get into it, I was gonna tell you a little about me. I am from Ariska, North Dakota, on a small family farm. And Throughout my life, I've spent a lot of it in Valley City. I went to school in Valley City and continued my education here as well. Throughout my life, I have also loved arts and crafts. From these arts and crafts, I've noticed I've always enjoyed repeating elements that can always be found in whatever I create. Some of these things are repetition, where I repeat a process over and over using bright colors. In fact, I always dress this way too. I'm known for being bright and for using shapes. Ever since I was little, I've always had a thing for triangles, says my mom. <laughs> and I've used these various art principles in a lot of my works, such as cherry blossoms. In this one, I use pen to create these little tiny circles or flowers. I created them using a simple pen and a lot of them. I used a lot of colors to create this over an entire period. These flowers are very small. They're only about a pen size and a little more. So taking this little small area and then creating this massive piece, which is 24 by 36, took a lot of work. But through this process, I was able to create a piece that represents who I am. It is very colorful, uses lots of repetition, and through the flowers, I was able to create circle shapes as well. When I was thinking about what I wanted to do for my senior show, I really hovered around the idea of fruit. Not only does it cover the principles of what I love, such as repetition, bright colors, and shapes, it also has a variety. There's lots of different apples I could choose from, as well as different series of fruits as well. There's citrus, there's lemons, there's berries. So the possibilities of how I wanted to portray my art was endless. It also has a very special element to me, and that is beauty. Each fruit possesses its own qualities, which makes it beautiful. No fruit is alike. Even an apple to an apple isn't the same. I think it is beautiful how there's so many different patterns and textures that create each fruit and how realistic it looks in appearance. Someone that is very good at making realistic art is Dennis Warkovitz. He is a professor at Bowen Green State University and is known for large scale paintings of fruit and flowers that are extremely realistic in appearance. 
he uses color pencils or oil paint to create these massive peaches of melons, peaches, and citrus. Here's one of his pieces. In the first picture of what he was holding was just a small print of what he normally creates. The real images are much bigger, as this one is 33 by 72 inches. And what attracts me to his pieces is how detailed and expressive they are. In each one of his pieces, the seeds, the veins, and the translucent feeling really amplifies what a fruit can be. However, the most important aspect to me is how he includes light into his works. As you can see, there's a large shadow underneath as well as light on the very tips of the watermelon. I love that he's able to bring the fruit to life and make it glow. He also has a nice series of rosettes where he takes like lemons or oranges and really amplifies the veins that interweaves in between each section. Here, he really adds the color and amplifies the vein through the light. Another inspiration is Angela Faustina. She is a temporary artist who approaches art with a new style. She portrays realistic objects in a blown up manner. She, in every piece, is able to create these beautiful works that really focuses on the beauty and vibrancy of life. In each stroke she makes with her paint, the color comes more and more to life. It fills the atmosphere and makes everything very vivid. And I like how even though it's presented in an original way, the, cub the common subject matter connects us all together, as we all know what this is across the world. If anyone across the world saw this, they would know what it is, which brings us all together in a unifying way. And I think that's really special and unique about these artists, is that they can take subject matter and change it and make it their own, but yet represent the same subject. I also really like this one, as she has a lot of different textures of painting into it. The middle part, I really love how she has this sponge-like texture, and then she has this starburst effect coming out of it. I think that's really unique and special about her work. And I think showing it really helps viewers see what she wants to portray. These works by Angela and Dennis have really inspired my works. In my works, I try to focus on the beautiful aspects of the fruit inside and out, and critically feature each fruit from one another. In many pieces, I show one aspect of one what one might see. They might see the, just the inside, or they may just see the outside. There are a few that have both the inside and outside, which is split in half in some way. Within each fruit, if you look at it, it has its own character of individual veins that tie it all together and color. Colors give away a fruit. If you see a, a red circle in the distance, you most likely know it's an apple, along with texture. If I gave you a unpeeled orange while your eyes were closed, you would definitely know it's an orange or some type of citrus, as they are very distinct from one another. No texture represents that more so than a citrus fruit. 
While I highlight these different qualities, I explored many aspects of painting, including using the brush strokes to really help my color, as well as blending and using sponging techniques to portray colors in a different way and help vary my textures. From these inspirations, I've created works such as this one. This is an apple tree blossoming. I also think that the process of how fruit gets to how, where it is, is amazing. We don't get fruit just automatically. It takes time to develop and through time and energy of the sun and animals such as bees, we get a beautiful creation in the end. Each aspect of the life cycle is beautiful. Bees provide pollen or pollinate flowers so that we can have the beautiful fruit in the end of what we can eat. However, a lot of us take for granted these bees. We see them and we want to get far away from them as possible. But in reality, we should take them as beautiful as well as the individual components found in the art. Each one of these pictures represents something different, but in their own way, they are beautiful even the de decomposing one. In this one, though decomposing in itself is not beautiful, what decomposing does is beautiful. It brings new life to what has already come before it, which is flowers, blossoms, leaves, and fruit. And it allows that to regenerate and come back. Now for the various fruits that come from this process. This one is titled Zesty. It is acrylic paint on canvas. It is 16 by 20 inches. And through this one, I really wanted to highlight the color of an orange and really help it show the variance of what it can be. I made the colors very intense through multiple layers of paint. I also tried to amplify the veins of an individual orange. In this one, I show you how intense the colors are. What I mean by layers of paint is I would paint one layer of paint, let it dry, and then reapply the same color of paint to that area. I did this multiple times for an end result to look like this. The colors are very saturated and are no longer muted. This one is Squeeze Me. It is acrylic on canvas and is 16 by 20 inches. With this one and my first citrus one, I also had lots of layers for it. In this one, I did not start out with just these colors. Instead, it was a process to build onto. In the first picture is what I started out with. This fruit was going to be very bright and vivid in pink and red colors, but I soon realized that wasn't that interesting. And so I wanted to add yellow and oranges to it as well. To do this, I painted over the first layer to get the one on the right. But this one doesn't have the same intensity as my, uh, my final. This one lacks the colors and the saturation of them. So through the same process of layering, I created this piece to be very intense in the yellow and the oranges. I also tried really hard to get colors to blend in with each other 
to not only provide that vibrance, but brush stroke feeling as well. I did a whole series of citrus and in each one I portrayed something different. I want viewers to not only see that the outside feeling, but the inside as well. And there's different components in the inside as well. In this one, I took two slices of lemons and placed them on top of each other of what could happen when a lemon is cut. I really highlighted the colors in this piece, especially on the outside. And the veins in this one are very protruding and add to the overall effect of what a lemon appears. This one is my grapefruit and this inspiration was very hard to find. I wanted to portray grapefruit in a way that we normally wouldn't think about. For one, I do not like the pith eating it as this taste doesn't appeal to me. It also gets in my nails when I try and peel an orange or citrus fruit. But I felt this was an important aspect of the beauty of what the fruit could be. It is very intricate and detailed from the moment you step away from the peel to the very inyards of the grapefruit, as well as every other citrus fruit around. The last piece of my citrus series is Line Spell Smile. In this one, it was important for me to capture the translucentness of what a slice could be. It was also important capturing the light and the beautiful colors surrounding it. Altogether, this series I created first and it really helped me to see how I could work with a picture but make it my own. It also helped me to see how hard working with black canvases were. These canvases I've never had before so I didn't realize how absorbent they were to the color. It took many layers to create the end result but with the layers, I'm glad I was able to accomplish such beauty and detail in each layer. Moving on to my next series, I did a pear and apple. In this series, I tried using a different technique. On the left of the pear, where I only had paint, I just use a paintbrush to paint all the yellow. But on the right side, on the exterior, I used a sponge technique to get a nice texture. And if you rub your hand against this, it feels very different and unique. I did this process through a technique I call sponging. What I did for this one, as well as the pair, was I would apply a bunch of colors of paint onto my canvas. I would then take my sponge and I would dab it onto the canvas until all the colors I wanted were blended in nicely. Like with many of my pieces, this one took many layers to get that intense color of a nectarine hue or color. I, I did this multiple times. As you can see on the left, this is my first layer and I then painted over it with what's on the right to get this final product that looks like this. It took many more layers than what's shown, but through the process it gave me a new style of painting as well as providing a way of texture into the piece. My next series is a berry series. Through this series, I accomplished a lot. 
For one, I didn't want to break this one up as a strawberry has so many different components to it. There's the inside where it bursts out as well as the inside where it like, caves in. And I didn't want that taken away from what the outside looks like as well. For these two pieces, I did two different types of painting. On the exterior, after I created the base coat, I did a very tedious process of painting each dot onto the canvas with a toothpick. This process is called pointillism, or a process where you repeatedly do the same technique over and over again with a brush stroke or fingerprint, or in this case, a toothbrush. This was a very tedious process and took many hours, but in the end, it gave the right consistency of what a strawberry would look like, and it also kind of had that feeling of how it feels. For my other one, I painted the base layer practically all in one layer. However, I did not like this look. I felt the white blended in too much and didn't give enough contrast between my dark color and my light color. So once again, I painted a lot just to get the same consistency of what I wanted. This painting, after it was dried, I painted another layer on top. I then did this in a different way. Instead of having the strawberry be put together all in one at one time, I broke it apart. I did the white part next, and then after I got it as bright as I wanted, I brought in a little pink. With this pink, I added it to the white but I didn't paint the whole thing. Instead, I had my paintbrush with both white and pink on it. That way I could do one stroke and it would blend in with the other stuff around it. This also helped as I didn't have to cover the white so much and layer it as much. After I finished with the outside, I then went to the middle and almost dabbed my pencil or paintbrush in a sponge-like technique to get that consistency of what the very inside of a strawberry looks like. Another berry I did is called Blue Oxidant. In this one, I once again did multiple layers to get this very vibrant, saturated blueberry. In fact, the very first layer was very bright and looked nothing like a blueberry, but through constant effort, I was able to create something very beautiful. In fact, this one's my favorite piece. I then created a melon series, where I wanted to portray not only the inside of one fruit, but and outside of one fruit, but of two fruits, as these fruits are both melons, but are very different. And I wanted to portray that and see, have the viewers see that. The outside of a watermelon is so different than the outside of a cantaloupe. They're both melons, but one is very smooth, while the one is very bumpy, as well as the color and taste of them. It's different as well. I created this one as a last dis effort to save the paint that I used from this one into this one. I had so much extra paint from making the outside of the cantaloupe that I used it to create this one. This one was very challenging as I didn't know how to create the perspective I wanted. But in the end, I'm glad I worked with the paint I had 
and created something very interesting and unique compared to all the other ones I've done. I've also included pictures into my show. Within the pictures, I wanted to highlight how beautiful and vibrant each of these fruits are. Like in my paintings, I highlight how colorful they are as well as the texture and stamp. So I hope you learned that fruit isn't just all about what you taste. It's more than that. I hope the next time you see fruit, you will take the time to really analyze it and enjoy the aspects it adds to your life. Enjoy the patterns, the colors, and the different textures. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. You're making me hungry, and it's <laughs> right after lunch. Um, so my first question is your favorite piece. You were saying it was the blueberry. Could you just explain why? I think I liked how it turned out. Like, I had an idea of blowing up a blueberry, mm -hmm. but I did not imagine it to look so good in the end. And I think I highlighted the colors really well and made the inside like exactly like a blueberry. And I feel it's the most realistic one. And mm -hmm. I only highlighted just the outside, but I think that's enough. Like, you know what it is. And it can be seen from far away and people will recognize it. So another question, what's your favorite fruit? <laughs> <laughs> I like watermelon. Interesting. <laughs> Yet the blueberry one is your favorite painting. Does that mean you're going to do a watermelon full series next? I could. You could. So what came first? Was it the photography or the paintings? A lot of it was photography. I have done drawings in the past of fruit that came from my photography, but none of these are really from that series. Instead, these are all like from works that I've seen or of pictures that I would love to portray. So definitely the photography came first. Okay. Is there a certain of your photos that you just enjoyed the most when you took it? Was it the bananas, raspberry, or the lemon? Just especially your show um, card. I enjoyed the pomegranate actually. Oh. I just love how like the reds and the whites blend in really nicely. And I think the shadow looks very nice and it highlighted it really well and also that was the most difficult one for me to photograph so I'm glad it like turned out in the end awesome um with your degree because you're double majoring in elementary ed and art what are you hoping to do because I'm hoping to be an elementary teacher hopefully in one of the primary grades hopefully first or second and then I want to do art on the side just art like traditional are you thinking more digital what I would probably say a mixture I love aspects of everything I love photography and I do love like drawing and painting as well drawing and painting <laughs> which gets back into that pointillism that seems to be a popular repetition between your show and then Virginia's show. Why do you think that is? Why pointillism? I think people find it fascinating that it takes so much time to create, but yet in the end, it's all worth it. All those little dots m may not seem like much, but when it's all put together, it really completes the piece. And I think it's eye-catching that people see that. And I know you mentioned back the bees were important. Would you do a series just on bees and fruit or? Yeah, I think that's an interesting aspect. And I think they're forgotten a lot, 
but I definitely like to highlight them more. More. And what's your favorite medium? I like color pencil. Okay. Or photography. Um, with color pencil, I just feel like I have a lot of control mm -hmm. with where I want to place the colors. And the colors are very well put together when you get it all blended. And then photography, I just love that you can take a camera and go find something interesting with it. So even though your show is painting and photography, would you have done a color pencil or are you just glad you did painting? See, I'm glad I challenged myself. Painting has never been like my strongest suit, but through this show, it really helped me develop my mm -hmm. own style and it helped me to see that painting isn't so bad. And if I did do a colored pencil one, that would take me forever because that is such a tedious process to do. And I could definitely see myself overthinking it and really analyzing a picture just because like it's so perfect that I can use a pencil that's really small for it. And so then I'd have to capture every single detail that a fruit has. Okay. And folks who are tuning in, you can put your questions in the chat either on Facebook or on YouTube, just to remind. Um, what are your plans after VCSU? I hope to get a job teaching somewhere and then hopefully continue working with art on the side and maybe even doing that with kids as well. Hoping to bring art somewhere into the elementary education? Yes, or at least start a program or something that mm -hmm. has kids and I can teach them the basics of what art can be. And would you want to work with vegetables ever? If so, what vegetables would interest you the most? That's <laughs> actually a good question. <laughs> See, I'm not the biggest vegetable lover, but I have seen works that are interesting and could be really cool to do. Mm -hmm. I would say doing like a pumpkin or a cucumber would be interesting just because like a cucumber has like the same seeds and variants of the components. And then a pumpkin just has weird components in the middle that would be fun to highlight and capture. The seeds? Well, like the string stuff. Okay. Oh, the <laughs> the stringy, of course, the pumpkin. But then the seeds, because you do talk about that process in like the apple cherry blossoms, such as how you highlighted just that blossom part. Would you do even more of those? Just Maybe. That took a long time to make those blossoms. So maybe not that small, but I maybe consider doing something like with seeds and just highlighting the various seeds. And what was your favorite painting process or technique and would you suggest painting for anyone to try? Yes, I would suggest painting as it can just be a hobby of like whatever you want to create. And it's also a time for you to relax and do something that you normally wouldn't do. You don't have to make anything special. Art is art and it can come in any form. And my favorite technique of painting was definitely the brushing or the sponging, I think. I think I like the sponging just because like, it was interesting how it came out with such a cool texture and seeing how the colors could blend was very interesting as well. And with colors, because you kept on saying saturation, keep on saturating, is that a lot from your photography experience of just saturating the backgrounds or the fruit? I would say so. With photography, I learned to use like simple backgrounds that really intensify whatever you're portraying, as well as making the colors very intense and vibrant and that would be from photography and what would you say to people who want to try art but don't think they have the ability to 
everybody's an artist in their own way. Anything's possible if you put your mind to it. You're going to be a good elementary school teacher because <laughs> that's important. Um, what advice do you have for even because you weren't an art major at first, you were an elementary education major. What advice do you have for non-majors here at VCSU who are just starting to maybe take an art class? Find something you like in it. It might not have to be the whole entire art industry, but there's something for everyone, and I think we could all enjoy it in some way. Is there a medium or process that you wish you could explore further, Kayla, in the art realm? I want to try water modeling, so that would be Ooh. really interesting to have a bucket full of water and then place ink on top and then with toothpicks or whatever you're using, smear it and move it around and make swirls and stuff. And I think that would be really interesting to try. For something that I've done, I would like to further myself with working on the wheel in ceramics. I really enjoyed that and I think I could work on it and make vertical things. <laughs> More vases and yeah. instead of bowls. <laughs> yeah, I was known for bowls. <laughs> and what advice do you have for students who are in the art department, whether in art major, minor, or art education, digital? What advice do you have as we, they go through their time here at VCSU? Don't be afraid to explore. Speak your mind and try and highlight what you're known for in your pieces. And then don't procrastinate and make lots of art pieces, as you never know how they're going to fit the space and you might run short because how many art pieces are in your show altogether I believe 25 25 and how long was that process I started in the summer but my issue is I'm very bad at finishing things so most of these pieces took me a long time to finish just mm -hmm. because I like starting things but never finishing. I have all these great ideas and then once I start applying it, I don't see it turning out kind of thing. And so I strive really hard to start something and then finish it. So this whole process took me months to do, but I started it in the summer. Do you have any unfinished work that did not make it in the show? I have a few pieces. One was a colored pencil one mm. where I had a red circle and then it was going to be orange to white mm. all the way through the rainbow of like a different fruit and then it was all one big piece. So there were 16 circles and each one was going to be like a different color or variant of it, of the rainbow. But I only got through like three of them and not through all 16 pieces or 16 circles I guess so that one's unfinished and then my strawberry one was started on a different canvas and that one turned out very vibrant and red and it looks more so like a tomato now and so that one's unfinished and I don't know if you would consider a tomato a fruit so I didn't know if that would fit or not the tomato or fruit vegetable conversation we could have <laughs> that could go on for hours <laughs> no um, but very strong on all your pieces and are you hoping to come back I know you're going to student teach over in the spring but are you hoping to come back when the new buildings open yes I'd love to see it see what I'm missing out on <laughs> See what you're missing out on. Um, what do you say to students who are thinking about being a double major? It's a lot of work, but in the end, you'll have two degrees that can be very useful to you, and you'll look really good to potential employers.
which is very important <laughs> in this day and age to be fully marketable, as we all know. Um, and with the two artists you chose of inspiration, is there one you prefer over the other, or is it just both equally, these are my two favorite? See, I was all more so inspired by Dennis, just because mm -hmm. I've worked with him a lot more. He was my inspiration for many of my classes prior to my senior show, mm -hmm. and like I knew about him more. But I do love how Angela is able to create such blown up pieces and still highlight the detailed aspects of it. Detailed aspects, okay, awesome. And just checking if anybody else has any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat, folks. Because um, with your paintings especially, which one was your hardest? Ooh. I definitely think the strawberry, just being the outside one, was very hard for me. One, because the little tiny circles took ages. But I think my biggest struggle came from the orange series. Those were like my very first ones. And so in that stage, I was still very critical of getting every component of the picture I was mm -hmm. going off of. And so that would upset me if it didn't look exactly like my inspiration. So those ones took a long time to finish just because I was very critical of myself and found things that weren't perfect. But I soon changed like my painting theory and use more so the paint strokes to create the lines instead of mm -hmm. adding the lines in later. And then you do, I have heard you play tennis too. Mm -hmm. And how has tennis also affected your art and our art affected your tennis? That's a good question. I think being able to be both like athletic and then on the artsy side is an important aspect as I hand eye coordination is really important and through painting you definitely need a steady hand to help yourself paint the small details and so I think just having that aspect of yes I can do that too helps the creative side as well and helping to steady my hand more. And then I know you have 16 by 18 inches is your painting size. Would you 16 go 16 by 20. 16 by 20, sorry. <laughs> so would you go any larger? Potentially, just I know that I would struggle to make something that big because I have always been a person that enjoys making smaller things. So the 16 by 20 was already a challenge to me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> going a little larger than that, I don't know if I would. <laughs> I would have intentions of finishing and doing it, but I just don't see myself taking the time to complete such a big work. But would you do it after? I mean, you're going to be, well, <laughs> student teaching and then teaching does put in time and balancing that time for art, time for teaching. Would you try it? I think so, just to say that I've done it. Mm -hmm. And then it would help me to like see how things are enlarged and stuff as well, as well as scale. Scale. And my last question with the black canvases was just the choosing, because you had the white canvas series and then the black canvas series. You said the black was very challenging. Did that help you when you did your white, the strawberries and the berry series? I think so, because then it made me realize that art just won't be done in one layer. It will take time to mm -hmm. complete the process. And then through the different layers on the white canvases, I won't see the strokes, which probably would have 
deterred me at first just because like I saw the strokes and would be devastated that you could see them. So seeing that it can be done and it's okay t to not look perfect right away was something I learned throughout this process. Awesome. And I know I've heard comments from faculty and students that were very impressed by your paintings and um, photography. And there's a lot of comments of like congratulations on both Facebook and on YouTube. So they were like, great work, thank you. I wanted to state that. Um, do you have any final comments you wanna give to BCSU before? I, just, I know you still have one more semester with student teaching, but any comments you wanna give to the students here, faculty, staff? Enjoy your time. Though it doesn't seem like it's going fast in the moment, it actually is. And enjoy your time while you have it, as it's not always gonna be the same. Awesome. Thank you, Kayla Trebol. It was a great talk. And you can come up this evening, folks, at 4.30, third floor McCarthy. There will be fruit, no pun intended, not just also on the wall, but also at the reception, fruit, <laughs> cookies, and lemonade. Please come up and say thank you to Kayla and to see her awesome artwork. And then we will be finishing up here in the McCarthy Gallery, and we will be moving very, very soon to the Center for the Arts. And our next big show, folks, just to get you all a little excitement for, will be in the new building, Center for the Arts, the faculty staff show. So please make sure to come by and see it. And I also want to give a shout out, thank you to Eric Kringley and his crew for recording this. As always, they do an amazing job. So make sure you give him a high five if you see him on campus today. And for everybody else, Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for enjoying the exhibitions, the artworks, and the talks here. We look forward to seeing you all in spring 2022. As we're in the new building, please make sure to stop by, save it on your calendars. Also make sure you come up this evening. We would love to see you all. Kayla's show does come down on Friday, this Friday, well, after this weekend. So do make sure to sign the guest book. And again, thank you. And we will see you all again very soon. Go Vikings.